So I'm Robin Alter. I'm here from Alter Haptics. What we do is a is a, today you've heard a lot about visuals and how you can use, you know, light shined in your eyes to see virtual objects and that appears all real. And then we're using you know 3D spatial audio so that you can hear um, audio all around you. And so what I'm here to present is about touch a little known uh, sense that we don't talk often that much and we take for granted, but imagine that just like you're wearing your AR glasses and you see across the room a cat, wouldn't you like to be able to walk over to it and have the sensation of touch, the feel of the sh and shape of that cat projected into the place where you thought it was going to be? What we do is we use ultrasound to project sensations of touch onto your hand at a distance. No need to hold something and no need to wear something. So, as I said, you know, I, there's, there's very little discussion about touch. It's kind of funny to me because it's such an important sensation. When everyone comes to this conference and you introduce each other, you shake hands. If you're trying to interact with, with anything, you generally, if you see someone put on a VR and AR headset, the first thing they do is they reach out and they try to touch it. It's a, there's a sense of validation. Is it real? Does it react to my will? Even you know, our other senses, such as vision. If you reach out now and you try to reach out and touch the, the chair in front of you, what you'll notice is that you kind of miss. We don't actually grasp. We don't finish, we don't finish the, the, the movement until we can touch, and then we grab. So it's kind of touch in, in many scenarios, unless the lights are out. It's very much of a punctuation. It's a, it's a way of finishing sensation that complements all the other things we do. What you'll find, the more and more that you use AR and VR, it's when you have it, when you've ever uh, used any haptic kind of devices, what you find is if it's not there, it becomes a very unsatisfying kind of experience. How many times have you tried to interact with uh, AR or VR uh, hologram, reached out, and your hand goes through it? It doesn't, uh, the, we just desire that sense of where I reach, there's something there. And without that, you're never going to have true presence. You're not, there's always going to be that moment of, ah, it's not real. What we do is we use a, sen a set of uh, ultrasound speakers that are fired at different, at different times to uh, basically move the nerves on your skin just enough so that you feel like you're touching something. We have the ability to do, this, to do shapes so that at every point of contact when you touch an object, you actually feel the contour. We have a team in Bristol who is working on textures. We're actually being able to, uh, to record the vibration of different textures, whether it's skin or cotton or rock or whatever, and be able to project that across space to your skin. So this is how we do it. And uh, of course, if you want to come upstairs, I have some demos that I'm happy to show. Some of the interesting kinds of effects that we are able to do is that, you know, certainly we're able to do uh, textures and we're, we're kind of early in that. Um, but how we get shapes is that we are able to take a haptic point, just like in film, right? When you see a film, you're actually seeing a bunch of still frames spun across your eyes really quick and that makes it feel like there's movement. And so with haptics and with feeling of uh, contours of shapes, what we're doing is we're taking haptic points we're drawing them across your hand at say 14,000 frames per second, so it feels like the contour of an object. And we can do this dynamically. So if you are used to using Unity or some other game engine or uh, 3D engine, when your hand connects with the object at, the, at all points of contact, that is where we are firing uh, the, the haptic points. Um, and also what we find is that there's so much going on neurologically that your brain when you reach out and you touch something, you want so badly to feel that there's something there that you end up filling in the gaps. And we're finding so many really interesting uh, effects that the brain is filling in, of sensory substitution kinds of effects, such as you grab an object, you think it's a rock, you pick it up, you feel it, you turn it upside down and you still feel it. And why? Because your brain said, ah, oh, when I picked it up, it was there, I turned it over, it was always still there, and ah, oh, I have not. But in actuality, if we're not able to reach your nerves from these uh, ultrasound speakers were not actually doing anything. So it's kind of fun to see all the different types of ways that sensory uh, substitution and, and your brain is filling in a lot of these gaps. So 
if you want, I can, you know, I, I can talk a bit about some of the applications that uh, we've been in business for over five years and uh, growing as a company. Uh, our headquarters are in Bristol, UK, and we've just opened up our Palo Alto office. And we've been, over the last, I guess, four years, we've been heads down getting this technology integrated into various uh, different applications and industry uh, implementation. So um, some of the ones that, the earlier ones were automotive. Um, and that's really, and you'll, you can find out different uh, partnerships we have with Bosch and with Harman. They're talking about in-car systems where you can drive and not, to, uh, the, the beauty of that use case is that it's, it just makes the driving experience much more safe. As you're driving, you put your hand out and you feel the knob of the radio or the AC and you can turn it and the AC and knob go, and the AC goes up or the radio goes up. It means you don't have to look over to validate that the gesture did something. So there's a very immediate fast, human way to interact with the car um, in a much safer way. Some of the other use cases up here, I like the elevator one. Uh, we get pulled a lot into the, the medical and hospital kinds of environments because then you can physically like interact with stuff in an in a intuitive way and not spread germs. So, you know, doctor walks into an elevator, you'll never have them press a button, they'll ask someone else to press floor three. So, that's one of the examples. I discussed the car. We have uh, really interesting stuff going on there. There's a whole bunch of other implementations uh, that I that um, that we are working on with partners. I am in the fortunate position in the company to actually work with R and D and with artists and with just people pushing the limits of different types of applications to to show different stuff. So I'm really uh, fortunate in that sense. And so we've uh, worked with third-party developers. Some have done things like taken a, a, there's a VR uh, paint uh, application where you're able to paint like tilt brush with different materials and draw them all around and then feel them, which is quite a cool kind of dynamic haptic delivery sensation. Uh, we've been approached by architects who are trying to do things like make your home give you a sense, give you a feeling when you walk in. I keep thinking of how would that be applied and I think, well, my daughters, when their room is messy, I can treat it like a Pikachu, your, your Pikachu is sad, you better go clean your room. So there can be all these like interesting applications that can come from uh, using haptics inside of all these different types of environments and it's been fun to work with the community to figure out different types of use cases. Um, so these are just some. I'm happy to also show, uh, there's a video, where's my media person? So there's a video a couple slides back which is showing, I'll go back to it. If you click on that, and one of, the, one of the examples in AR, which is always kind of fun, it was a recent project we did with uh, Meta, Dell, uh, Nike, and um, ourselves, where you can actually see, if you'll press on that link, you'll see a video of, of the workspace of the future, where you're able to design, in this case, a tennis shoe, with all the normal 2D tools, visualize it in 3D, manipulate it with your hands, and then be able to, to work in a much more intuitive way. Can we press on that video? I'll keep talking until it goes. It starts with a question. Starts with a question. Load, women's Load women's size eight. Followed by an idea. On how to make things simpler, better, or more beautiful. Approximate shape from sketches. But it's not just what it looks like. Load cross-terrain sequence. It's how it works. Which means trying. And failing. And trying again. To be a designer means not being bound by the limits of your tools, but instead... Expand box. Being inspired by them. Show me the upper. So that you can focus on what only you can do. Being creative. Being curious. and being critical. Exploring the union between function 
and form. Until suddenly you know. Optimize cushion pattern for terrain. That's it. And when you're ready to share your work, make sure everyone can see that the world is a little simpler, better, and more beautiful. Great, I will uh, switch me. So that's a, you know, for me it was, a, it's an exciting project just to even see because that is an incredibly, uh, it's real, right? It's a product. <laughs> it's gonna be a product, that's a video now. And that's something that, you know, it'll be a very intuitive way to interact and to design. And so we stop, don't have to start. We can stop forcing our brains into these two, 2D models and really visualize and work in a 3D space, which I think is going to just, you know, dramatically improve our perception and the way we, uh, uh, the way we create. If I can go to the last slide. Nothing's happening. But I usually get asked, asked the question, uh, you know, where is this going? Where do you see this happen? Where do you see this, um, you know, going as a company, as in a technology? And so my answer is I look at this as, uh, as I look at ultra haptics and what we provide as a base level service as we, we use video now. We'll have that with glasses and contacts and lots of different uh, things and sound coming from speakers and lots of different devices. I see haptics also. This is a way to deliver haptics via ultrasound as a service, as a fundamental service. And so whether you're at home, uh, use, you, know, you don't want to use your remote, you want to turn on the TV, or you walk in and your thermostat is able to provide you haptics um, for your HoloLens or your Meta or your ODG. These are all levels of service that you know, we will more and more become uh, used to and miss when it's not there. Um, I see really interesting, a lot of, a lot of the uh, side projects that I uh, work on now are in accessibility. We're helping uh, people with disabilities uh, navigate the world and get text in a simplified braille kind of factors or enabling location-based environments and digital posters and marketing environments to have uh, another level of uh, experience uh, whenever a person walks into that space. So that's what we do, that's where I see it going. I look at Ubiquity, I see us being integrated into walls, into consumer electronics, into furniture, and so that whenever you're ready and you want to um, interact and you know, uh, be able to touch the digital world, we're there. So that's it. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> <laughs>